Arcadian Vanguard presents the Wrestling News in your daily wrestling newscast for Saturday, June 17, 2023. Good morning, I'm Mike Sempervivi. We begin with news on CM Punk. Ahead of tonight's debut of AEW Collision on TNT, CM Punk talked about his return to the ring, as well as several other subjects during an interview with ESPN's Mark Raimondi that was posted to ESPN's website on Friday. Out of action for nine months following a torn triceps he suffered on September 4, 2022, during his AEW World Title victory at All Out, Punk addressed his comments during the now infamous post-show scrum where he let loose with his frustrations with the company while sitting next to company president Tony Khan. Quote, The first thing I said to Tony when I sat down with him and spoke to him after it was, Man, I'm really sorry I put you in that position. I apologize for the scrum. But when you watch that scrum, you're looking at a very, very frustrated guy who had told people. That's not the first time he had heard all that. It's not the first time lawyers were told all that. And I was just looking for something to be done, and nothing got done. End quote. Punk later added, quote, Yeah, it's very easy for me to say that I regret that, and I handled it the wrong way, 100%. End quote. Punk touched on the disintegration of his relationship with the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, and Adam Page, including Page's unscripted comments during a face-to-face promo segment on the May 25th, 2022 episode of Dynamite. Punk claims Page told him that he had made the comments because he believed Punk tried to have Colt Cabana fired from the company. Punk once again denied the allegation, saying he never asked that Cabana or anyone else be released. While not being able to comment on the post-scrum brawl that took place in the locker room following last year's All Out show, due to non-disclosure agreements, Punk noted that he has tried to reach out to Omega and the Jackson brothers but received return messages from legal representatives asking Punk not to contact them. Quote, I don't think what happened was a big deal. This has happened in the last 10 months in hockey, in basketball, in baseball, in just about every sport. And it's covered and it's gone the next day. I think because I injured my tricep and I've been out for so long, I think it's been exasperated. End quote. Punk did address the debut edition of the Collision Show as well, saying he's excited to be in the position as the face of the program, adding, quote, this is what people dream about, end quote. According to Fightful Select, Punk didn't do any other media leading into tonight's debut, and that AEW requested ESPN be the outlet that handled the interview. In more AEW news, AEW President and CEO Tony Khan took to Twitter on Friday to reveal the announcing team for Saturday night's Collision debut. Current New Japan Pro Wrestling play-by-play man Kevin Kelly has been tapped by AEW to provide those same duties on Collision. He'll be joined in the booth on color by current Ring of Honor announcer Nigel McGuinness, as well as the longtime voice of professional wrestling Jim Ross. Kelly also took to Twitter to announce that he would be remaining on in his current role with New Japan and would be traveling to Japan to provide in-person commentary for the company's upcoming G1 Climax tournament, which takes place between July 15th and August 13th. In another Twitter post, Kelly noted that statistician Chris Samsa would also be contributing to Collision and offering the same type of matchup data and factoids he provides on New Japan World. Tony Khan wasn't done using social media on Friday to make announcements about Collision as he also revealed that the theme music for the new program would be Elton John's iconic hit song, Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting. Originally released in 1973 as the first single off of John's Goodbye Yellow Brick Road double album, Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting reached number 7 in the UK and number 12 in the United States and is a certified gold single in both territories. Now with a look at last night's SmackDown, here's the Wrestling News' Lou Kippelman. WWE SmackDown was broadcast live on Fox from the Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. In the main event segment, Jay Uso superkicked his cousin, WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns, and joined his brother Jimmy Uso in walking away from the bloodline. Main event of SmackDown, a main event of pay-per-views, a main event of WrestleMania. You know why? They know us now. I'm the right-hand man, main event Jay Uso, and it's all because of him. So guess what? You out. (laughs) 
and I'm out too. Oh my God! Jimmy and Jay super kicked their brother Solo Sokoa out of the ring before once again super kicking Reigns, leaving him laying in the middle of the ring as the show went off the air. The pretty deadly team of Kit Wilson and Elton Prince were victorious in a seven-team gauntlet match, which earned the team a title shot at WWE Undisputed Tag Team Champions Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. Wilson and Prince were the final team to enter the gauntlet and eliminated the Brawling Brutes team of Sheamus and Ridge Holland. The Brutes began the match by eliminating the Street Profits, followed by Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, Joaquin Wilde and Cruz del Toro, and Hit Row, before falling to Pretty Deadly. Charlotte Flair was a guest on the Grayson Waller effect, which Bianca Belair interrupted to express her displeasure over Flair receiving a Women's World Championship match against Rhea Ripley. In other results, Santos Escobar pinned L.A. Knight, Zelina Vega defeated Io Sky when Bailey's interference backfired, in a mixed tag team match, Scarlett and Karrion Cross defeated the OC's AJ Styles and Meachin. And in a backstage segment, Baron Corbin attacked Cameron Grimes as he was doing an interview. I've just been having so much fun here on SmackDown, and the fact that I'm... Oh, Baron Corbin! Yeah! Oh. has just run out. <sighs> Corbin's been raising hell down at NXT and now taking out Grimes here tonight. For the wrestling news, I'm Lou Kippelman. AEW Rampage on the TNT Network featured matches taped Wednesday night at Capital One Arena in Washington, D.C. In the main event, Konosuke Takeshita, along with new manager Don Callis, defeated Bandito, pinning him after delivering the power drive knee strike. A brutal blindside shot. Bandito struggling to pull himself upright, but awaiting to catch the... It was a gnarly shot. Power oh. drive knee. Hear the impact. Two, three. Good night. The show opened with the United Empire team of Will Ospreay, Jeff Cobb, and Kyle Fletcher knocking off Chuck Taylor, Trent Barretta, and Rocky Romero. In a mixed six-person tag team match, Mark Briscoe teamed with his father, Papa Briscoe, and AEW referee Aubrey Edwards to defeat Jay Lethal, Jeff Jarrett, and Karen Jarrett when Edwards forced Karen to submit to a figure four leg lock. Also on the show, Taya Valkyrie defeated Trisha Dora, continuing in the direction of a heel turn with a more aggressive style, and the Hardy brothers accepted the challenge of the Gun Brothers. Yeah, yeah, they're very animated, charismatic, Arrogant, arrogant and very over dramatic. I mean, their daddy's scissors, they suck. It what tricks look, guns. Next week, we're coming back over the overhill and we're gonna do what your daddy's been trying to do for the last three years. We're gonna make you famous. Um. And with some more WWE news, here's the wrestling news' Luke Hippelman. The company announced on Friday that Pittsburgh's PPG Paints Arena would be the location for WWE's revival of the premium live event, Payback. Taking place on Saturday, September 2nd, the show marks the first time Pittsburgh has been home for a WWE pay-per-view or premium live event since July 2018, when Extreme Rules was also held at PPG Paints Arena. The payback name and branding hasn't been used by WWE since August 30th, 2020, when the COVID-19 pandemic forced the show inside the company's Thunderdome set, located at Amway Center in Orlando, Florida. Tickets go on sale for the general public on June 27th. For the wrestling news, I'm Lou Kippelman. And before we leave you today, we'd like to remind you that however you consume your content, you can find the wrestling news 24 hours a day and seven days a week across social media. On Twitter, follow us at Wrestling News AV. Our Facebook page is also Wrestling News AV. The wrestling news can also be found on the Arcadian Vanguard YouTube page. And for those who utilize Amazon Echo devices, just tell Alexa to play the Wrestling News podcast. And remember to make sure you add podcast at the end. Once again, for daily updates, breaking news, and more, follow the wrestling news across social media. 
And that's the news for today. If anything happens, we will be here to tell you about it. No clickbait, no paywall, just the wrestling news. The Wrestling News is a division of Arcadian Vanguard, and the Wrestling Newscast is a production of the Arcadian Vanguard Podcast Network.